So what are story points? Now, I'm going to teach you a game called Planning Poker. It's basically, it's a, you know, this is the process we're going to use. So why don't, I just give you some random cards at this point, okay? Problem statement is, transporting each of these animals from point A to point B. Let us say from LA, LA Zoo to uh, the one zoo I like, the, the Oakland Zoo. Here, okay? So that's the scope of the thing. I want you to relatively make the level of difficulty in transporting these animals. Why do we do it secretly like a card? So that one person does not bias the other person on the weightage of the difficulty of the story. Okay. So what I want you guys to do is, I want you to give the smallest of these animals a one and relatively weight the other animals on the level of difficulty. One, something is 13 which means it's 13 times more difficult than the other one. Any questions you have as a scrum team, who would you ask? Product owner. Because I am the one who knows all the... Uh, you know the user expectations. So every two minutes, you go ahead, write the animals' names in your paper as a team, okay, and put the story points right next to each other. What are the resources that you have? You have. Okay. So she's asking me the question. That's exactly the duty of a product owner. In any feature, the teammate will ask the question, and it's my responsibility to answer. So I'll say that you have a big truck. You have a, a, a you know. A, uh, personal, required personal, uh, whatever is required for the biggest animal you have it at your disposal. Good question. His question is, are we transferring one by one? Yeah. Yeah. So she's asking a question, do we have permissions for all the animals? So at this point I will say that if it is a wild animal, we need to get permissions. We don't have permissions as of now. If it is a wild animal, we as a team need to work with the government to get permissions. If it's a domestic <coughs> animal, then we don't have to. So I'm answering the question. This is exactly how a split planning <coughs> meeting happens, where the estimation happens, where the team does not understand the story or a requirement. They ask the product <coughs> owner, and the rule of the duty of the product owner is to answer the questions. If the product owner is not able to answer, then the port owner goes to the stakeholder and comes back and tells the team. For the safety uh, precautions in the trust? Yes. I can send you a cat with the cow. Cat? I can send a cat with the cow. Multitasking. You can combine them and say, what are you saying? Okay, so he's asking me, you know, you can, uh, you know, for me it's easier, I can just combine cat and cow and send. So he's checking with me if that's okay, right? Because I'm clarifying it. And after thinking, I'm saying, you know what, yeah, if, uh, yeah, why not? Yeah. Now, like, again to answer the question, whose duty is to facilitate this with the scrum team? Scrum master. Scrum master. The scrum master can facilitate it. The product owner is there to carry the questions about the story. So in this meeting, the scrum master is there to facilitate. So I'm saying, let me go one animal by one animal. So I'm going to, as a scrum master, what I will say is, now, this is poker, right? So I'll say for cat, everybody raise your cards. When I say, so what is the cat for, what did your team come up with for cat? One. One. Zero. Okay, so the thing is, right, zero is if there is no effort involved at all. Yeah. Because, so the cat will go on its own, run away. <laughs> you tell the cat, hey cat, go see you in San Diego. So the zero card is, and it's a good question, why is the zero card? The whole goal is to learn the process, right? There is a zero because maybe in some cases, no that particular developer has no effort. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is no changes in this particular code because of the story. Yeah, then you can raise a zero. We can keep it with any of the animals. No, we can. But still, there is some effort to take the animal from point A to point B, right? So the zero card is given. The very, the most important thing for you to understand why zero is given in that card. I guess if that developer has no task or it is not impact, it's core not impacted, or his component of the task is the component of uh, work is not there for him. It's not impacted by the story. Then he puts a zero. Okay. Now three people have different answers. So the duty of the scrum master is to make sure all of them are on the same page. Okay. So one person says a half, one person says a one, one person says a zero. So now the duty is to talk them and defend themselves. Scenario: One person will say ten story points. Developer says. Other developer says one. But when the developer explains that, hey, you didn't think about these scenarios. After that, oh yeah, you are right. Then they may, other person may adjust their answers, but the goal is to let them speak up individually, defend their answers, 
and the duty of the scrum master is to get to the same page. What if two developers have different um, different uh, time to take to finish the task? Like for example, if I'm a junior developer, it takes five days for me to finish one. Piece. Quite possible in the voting audience, there's a junior developer. So that junior developer for same for, for same thing for him it is ten. Okay. So it's a valid point. It's a valid point. So the scrum master, the way you do it is, you can say that okay, you are saying uh, ten, or you are saying one. Okay. Uh, in this one, we can't allow that uh, amount of time difference. That is the only reason why don't you shadow the other person, and you work together to get it done. Otherwise, in this methodology, there can be no junior people, right? So we should build in the system some way for the people to work together because there are always going to be some junior people coming up and they have to get up to speed, maybe new hires, things like that. So a very good question what she is asking, that as a scrum master or as a facilitator, you can say, okay, but then she will have to take some additional work. So you have to overall manage the work, but right, uh, you give me, give me additional help and I will work and shadow, okay, fine, I am comfortable. Okay. Let's take lion. Compared to the cat, which is a one, right? Let's start with them. What do you think? It's an 8. What do you think it is? 21. So a wild animal. 13. Two people say 8, 13, 21, 13, 13. So three team members say 13. One says 21, one says 8. So you are the least. So why do you think it is 8? Considering the whatever the safety measures and government permissions and everything, we consider this to be. Okay, so I'm curious to learn, right? So what do you what do you give for an elephant? Elephant five. So what he is saying is, uh, elephant is uh, easier to transport than a lion. No. no. <laughs> I mean, have you seen the elephant? <laughs> so it's quite possible, right? The so thing is, both are wild animals. Obviously, both have required permits by my explanation, and obviously, elephant is much bigger an animal, much weightage in tons. But the one thing is it can be a gentle giant as opposed to a lion which can be aggressive. So that is also there. But having said all those things, considering the size and the equipment size required to transport an elephant as opposed to a lion, do we all agree that it is a little bit more difficult? Yes, yeah. Explanations, are you comfortable to agree with the rest of the team that it is 30? Or is still sticking then then we have to give chance to defend. Right? The goal is to help facilitate and get people on the same page. Go and look at my storyboard right here. That is how I have given my points. Okay. So I have given my points based upon the relative level of difficulty. We will pick up the rest a little bit later. But you got the understanding of what is story points right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.